We had the return of Madison. She's here. Oh. Victoria F for functional. It has been the biggest learning experience for me. And super sad Peter. I am so grateful for our relationship. This is your Bachelor Season 24, Episode 10, The Women Tell All Recap. Grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hi, everybody. It's me, Lauren Zima, and I'm wearing my hair up because the higher the hair, the closer to God. What a great episode this was. Ah! Everybody, what did you think of the rose ceremony footage that we got of the women tell all let me know in the comments below i truly enjoyed myself you know let's get to it so this is the women tell all special where the women return but remember we still don't know where one woman was at the end of last episode madison had gone out into the night Last we saw, she was walking out into the outback. Did she run off with the kangaroos? Is she cuddling a koala? Did she return to that weird house where she and Hannah Ann and Victoria F talked about who'd had sex with Peter, kind of? We'll find out, but first we have to see the other two. Today is the rose ceremony. So the women are getting ready for the rose ceremony and Hannah Ann is putting on copious amounts of lip gloss for no reason. She's like, Is anything even going on? Was any product leaving the gloss onto her lips? <laughs> I couldn't tell, but she's beautiful. You look like a man who has the weight of the world on his shoulders. So Chris Harrison must come speak to him and counsel him. And why is that happening amongst these trees? I don't know, it was very Lord of the Rings to me. But you know, they are on a quest for the precious. Precious. The precious. Harry Potter, Star Wars, and Lord of the Rings. <laughs> how could Chris Harrison resist? So they're talking, but I don't know how much good it did because two minutes in, once again, we get Sam Peter. Don't drink every time we see Sam Peter this episode. Now, Peter says he's in three relationships and that this is so hard for him. I'm in three different relationships and this is so freaking hard for me right now. Let me know in the comments below, do you guys believe him? I straight up asked Peter at the Women Tell All taping, were you really in love with three women? Shameless plug. <laughs> and he says he was. No, I do wonder if Peter truly understands what an adult level of love is. But again, let me know in the comments below. Okay. And like I get her frustration and her anger and her pain. I mean, then he's in tears and he says something so important. He tells Chris Harrison that maybe he didn't handle this well. Maybe I, like, I didn't go about this week the right way. I don't know. Does that mean he's saying maybe he wishes he hadn't slept with Hannah Ann and Victoria? Let me know in the comments below. I'm talking out of the side of my mouth because everybody's gotten real riled up about this Madison ultimatum sex in the fantasy sweeps thing. It's a reality show, guys. We're all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. As long as you have wine. What did they drink in the Shire? Probably like a mead, like a mulled. Is that right? A mulled mead, a mullen mead. Sam! Sam! <laughs> Sam! Frodo! Oh my god, Chris and Peter are Sam and Frodo. And Frodo is so troubled and Sam, Chris Harrison is Sam, Sam the Wise. I know what we're being for Halloween. So we are in the Shire, and Hannah Ann and Victoria are waiting, and they look so cold. This is so intense. And again, we get Sad Peter. Sad Peter will pop up anywhere at any time. He's like a hobbit. You never know where he might be hiding until he's there with the ring. Oh, an engagement ring. Oh, mm. precious. <laughs> but we're all waiting, and the wind is blowing. Someone give Hannah Ann and Victoria a sweater. Let's get the show on the road. Let's do it. Late, but she arrives in a cute red dress, though honestly, I was just thinking, well, you're gonna be cold out here. No one told these women how to dress appropriately. You know, they don't have cell phones, they can't open up the weather app there in the outback and see what's the wind chill today. You know, what's the wind sheer today? Should I wear something sheer? Producers, can you get me a little info? Can I get on the Google for a weather report? Maybe AccuWeather forecast. What is the AccuWeather forecast? So yeah, Maddie's here without much explanation. You know, she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. My horse got lost on the way to Rivendell and it took like three left turns. Ran into Gandalf, he said, you shall not pass. pass. I was like, I kind of have to. I know I give Peter an ultimatum. Ultimatum, but like, now I'm back. 
maybe my favorite line. When Madison arrives under her breath, Victoria says to Hannah Ann, she's here. And Hannah Ann says, oh. She's here. Oh. <laughs> she learned from Daddy Rick, don't waste a word. Don't even waste a word. Oh. Now this was interesting. Madison tells Chris Harrison that she was falling in love with Peter. I was falling in love with him. Although if I remember correctly, last episode when they were up on that building, she said she was in love with Peter. The man that I just realized that I'm in love with. And now she's saying that after last night, she doesn't know. No, I don't really know. But she's here. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and then look out! Sad Peter! I think that the wine went up, but went back into the glass. That's amazing. And the rose ceremony is beginning. And we thought that we'd had sad Peter, but we didn't know we were gonna get sobbing Peter. Absolutely, like, destroying me. Are there any tissues in the Shire? You all have a little piece of my heart. I mean, wow, 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 you guys. This season has had a lot of firsts. Bachelor historians help me out. Has a lead ever cried at a rose ceremony before? Oh, let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Hannah Ann. So Hannah Ann gets a rose, and they have a long hug. And don't drink for every heartbeat you hear. And oh my goodness, this music. It's so intense. It's so emotional. Is this that full orchestra from Peru that was underutilized? Is that what they've been working on this entire time? The score for the finale gives it so an Emmy. And then we don't know what the wind shear was, but whatever it is, it is blowing so hard that it blows the petals right off the rose. Things are literally falling apart. And I love it, it was so good. So Peter has one rose left. And look, I think we all knew that Madison was going to get that remaining disintegrating rose, right? What I was not prepared for was the way that Peter's voice would crack as he said her name. He's like, Madison. 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 Ma Madison. Madison. She's like, what? Is that me? Is he saying Victoria? So it's so windy here. I can't hear it. Did you guys hear what he said? Is he still giving out that rose? It's, it's like falling apart. Madison. Madison. <laughs> you know what? Actually, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Drink every time you were totally unprepared for what would happen during the next few minutes of this episode. Madison gets the rose, but kind of looks like she wants to kill Peter. Madison. And then she's all quiet, like maybe she won't accept the rose. And Peter's literally waving it in front of her like, hello, it's right here. Would you accept this rose? And she says, yeah. And then Peter looks like he might cry again. And he's like, are you sure? Sure. Okay. Honestly, how much did you guys love watching this? This is wild. It was amazing. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Even if you don't want to accept the gift. Sure. Even if the rose is right there and you're not really sure. Even if you previously gave an ultimatum. Anyway. Oh, more heartbeats, don't drink! <laughs> Luckily, everyone seems to be in good cardiovascular health, mentally and emotionally unclear. Quick break from the tension to applaud Chris Harrison and Peter Weber's suits with no ties look. I'd love that. And we're back, and seriously, was this the saddest, dopiest, most delicious rose ceremony of all time? Let me know in the comments below. Use the wind shear to blow your fingers across those keyboards, everybody. And the wind is bringing back the wine. Okay. Victoria, I'm sorry. And again, drink for being unprepared. Victoria F. has been sent home, and for the first time, the entire time she's been on this show, she did not, Victoria F., for freak out. Okay. I really couldn't believe it, you guys. She's being sent home by the man that last week she was crying over, saying she was in love with. I love him so much. And she was totally cool, calm, and collected. Victoria F for faring fairly well? Yeah. I mean, Hannah Ann's crying more. And Peter 
Peter's crying more. And we do get an explanation from him. He tells Victoria F. that his heart was simply further along with the other women. My heart is farther along with the two other girls. And again, I wonder, Peter said he was in love with all three. I am in love with three women right now. So is he saying that there are different levels of love? I want to know what love is. Comments below. Okay. Victoria F. says that she thinks the convo with Madison and her giving Peter the ultimatum swayed Peter. I think the conversation he had with Madison changed everything that he felt with me. I will say I disagree. And even if it did, Victoria, baby, you don't want to be with a guy who's going to get swayed in his love for you by one conversation with another woman, okay? So, bye! More on her later. So we're down to our final two. And Peter tells Hannah Ann and Madison that his family is already here in Middle Earth. My family's already here. <gasps> Barb, don't let her go. Bring her home to us. Bring her home to us. Back to America. I need Barb here. OK. Cheers. Wow, Madison. Last week, she said actions speak louder than words. Like actions speak louder than words. And this week, Madison's serving us some good television again. She said, cheers to seeing if love can conquer all. Seeing if love can conquer all. What the f*** does that mean? <laughs> Honestly, guys, at the end of the day, Madison and Hannah Ann have both been women who overall this season have not caused trouble with other women in the house. Peter seems very invested in both of them. So this is the final two that we have, and I applaud them both. And who do you think Peter will end up with in the end, if anyone? Let me know in the comments below. That was one of the most emotional rose ceremonies I have ever witnessed. And we're back in the studio, and Chris Harrison says something unforgettable, and I don't know, maybe even regrettable. We'll have to wait and see. He said says that not a single person, not even Sad Peter, knows how this season ends. There is not a single person who knows how Peter's journey will end. Not even Peter. What in the actual what? I mean, they cut to the audience and they're like, what did I just say? I'm confused. Is this an ultimatum? It's really windy in here. I couldn't already said. Do you want to get a drink after this? Yes. Okay. Alea. So the women are here. And as usual at the tell-alls, the back row, I largely don't remember. <laughs> you know, this is how it always is. Chris introduces each woman and some of them have like changed their hair or they're very glammed up. And I'm like, who are you? Have I ever seen you before? <laughs> but I will say that they all looked beautiful. And cheers to that. Okay. Ladies, good to see you all again. But many of you have pointed out the two key women were missing, Natasha and our legal eagle, Kelly. Being honest, I do not know any more than you on why they weren't there. I have seen the tweets that Kelly was responding to people who were DMing her on Instagram and saying she wasn't invited. So she wasn't there. I don't know. But what I do know is that Chris Harrison opened this dialogue beautifully by saying that he hoped everyone was wearing the appropriate lingerie. Like a cute pajama lingerie set. Because this was going to be a finasco, everybody. After the finasco. Yes. I hope everybody wore their most comfortable Lingerie. <laughs> this could be a finasco tonight. Oh, simpler times, right? When all the women were doing was mispronouncing common verbiage on this show. When you go on this show, you know what happens in fantasy suites. Oh, goodness. And then right off the bat, we're discussing ultimatums again. I just didn't think it was fair to him to give him that ultimatum. Has your opinion changed on the ultimatum? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on, now we're watching old footage of the show. And gosh, this feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? So much has changed. I kind of forgot about this stuff, like all the Alea things. But these women haven't. They've been waiting and dying to talk about it. So we're going to get right into it. And I'm going to do now, I don't know what the word of the episode was, but I know what it wasn't. It wasn't resolution. <laughs> Sydney, what was your take on the two of them? Because we get into it, and Sydney is still calling Alea scripted. My honest opinion of Alea is that she is scripted. And then things are descending into arguing really quickly. And I honestly couldn't understand what any of them were saying. They were just yelling and talking over each other like this. And it was like this. I just couldn't. I mean, I just needed a drink because the words were evaporating and descending into a tornado of dialogue. And I couldn't understand a single person. I didn't understand what anybody was trying to say. And they were talking over each other. And I was just like, oh my gosh, ladies, we cannot move forward if you cannot listen. Listening is part of adult communication. No. I tell you what. We're gonna take a quick time out. Guys, so Prez is invited to the tell-all tapings, and so I go every year and I interview the contestants, and I'll be honest, I bring Advil, I do, and I pass it around to everybody. 
So, medicate safely. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the most admirable thing that a person can do at one of these tell-all specials is to own what they've done, to apologize for it if necessary, and to move forward. It's about owning, it's about atoning, and it's about growing. That's my biggest regret in this, is that I didn't just shut up, I word vomit. And so I'm going to cheers to every woman who did that tonight. First off, Alea! I've done it for 25 years. My mom calls it my princess voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> then cheers to Kelsey. Like I overreacted. It's about owning, it's about atoning, and it's about growing. But I already did apologize to right, you. We, I, I, we're good, no, right? we're fine. Okay. Oh, but then we're really in it. And we're back to the Tammy and Kelsey fight, and we're talking about the drinking, and the crying, and the pill popping. And, and then it turned into pill pop. I never called you an alcoholic. And we didn't get to any real resolution here, everybody. So, you know what? Without our legal eagle, Kelly, I'm ready to be the judge and jury. And my ruling is, Tammy, you shouldn't have said the Kelsey had alcoholic tendencies. That was taking things too far. You're not a doctor. You don't know her that well. And that could follow her for years to come. So be aware. Kelsey, you should be aware of your emotional energy. I understand that it's good to feel and show your emotions, but your emotions do affect other people. So just be cognizant of your energy, okay? We've ruled! You put on a show. It was from night one. That now, McKenna is still getting called up for allegedly trying to become famous from the show. All you do is just dance like a buffoon in front of the camera that's every right time. That's That's who no, I every, am. I'm every not going to change who every I am. Time. I will say that I do wish we'd seen more lip licking during this tell-all special. Now, Peter, you don't know when it's gonna happen. <laughs> I want to put a pin in this because I want to move forward because we're gonna we could do this all night. And my ruling is you two are never going to agree, but you're both fun to watch, so I order you to both go to Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> I'll be honest, this is a Harry Potter wizard's robe. It's a child's costume. You're a wizard, Harry. And by the way, don't drink every time somebody had a near crying voice quivering moment this episode. Madison. My mom calls it my princess voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> you taught me a lot about myself. You've taught me like on how I don't want to treat people. <laughs> Kelsey, come join me in the hot seat. And then Kelsey's in the hot seat and she gets a big champagne. And I thought, that's nice. I wish I would you know, would have let him love me the way that he wanted to. And then Victoria F is in the hot seat and I thought, this is captivating. What did you guys think of Victoria F in the hot seat? Let me know in the comments below. I have to say, it felt like a total 180 on this human being. Cheers to every time Victoria F owned it and atoned it. I mean, she really laughed at herself. The communication was difficult. I know, it's awful. <laughs> she apologized to Peter. And also, I'm sorry. I loved seeing this growth. Seriously, as Chris Harrison said, This is the woman Peter fell in love with, and I see it now. Oh, where was this woman all season, Victoria F, for where the f have you been? Did your opinion change of Victoria F? Let me know in the comments below. And you know, now Peter's here, and it's interesting because remember earlier in the season, the women were so frustrated with Peter allegedly rewarding the drama. He kinda did. And now they're all so nice to him. I'm just honestly grateful for you. They're loving him. I trust that you know what you're doing. Because truly, at the end of the day, everybody, Peter, I think, really is a good guy. He's very kind and gracious every time I've ever met him. I think he was, as he has said, following his heart through this whole thing. It's just, you know, it's a real quest. It's like when you wish you had your eight friends with you as you tried to not put the ring on until you were ready and you had to go through a lot of dangerous areas and then battle a lot of villains along the way. And at the end of the day, you just wanted to find that perfect partner, that best friend who you could live the rest of your life with. Peter's Frodo. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying, JC? You're with me on this. Chris and I went to Australia for Christmas, and on the way back, I, I didn't know what I wanted to watch. I couldn't sleep, so I just rewatched every Lord of the Rings movie. 
Did you guys know that koalas were used to make the sounds that the orcs make? I learned that recently. <laughs> Do you regret giving some of these other girls that cause a lot of drama so much opportunity to get to know you? And oh my goodness, cheers to Peter. He is confronted about whether he rewarded drama and he says he's learning from it. So he's owning, atoning, growing. I feel like if I can learn from that moving forward and be a stronger man and a better man at the end of that, I'm okay with that. Cheers! Mm -hmm. And speaking of growth, and I do need to get serious for a mo, the Women Tell All also included this segment that is again a first for the franchise. Rachel Lindsay came in, sat with Chris Harrison, and spoke with the ladies about online hate, about the difference between critiquing the show, giving your thoughts, and being unacceptable towards other human beings on the internet. I want to applaud the show for doing this. I was there in person and to witness Rachel reading out some of these tweets and DMs was so emotional. I know that it really affected her. And you guys, we should all be adult enough to know that there is a separation between saying your opinion on a reality show and messaging people horrible, mean, unacceptable things. So cheers to you if you are a grown-up who knows what's okay and what's not. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most unexpected and complicated endings. And then, ASIO sneak peek, we see what's to come in the finale. And it's very Australian. We start with music from a didgeridoo. And then there are kangaroos. Dingoes are a part of this montage as well. Peter's wandering through the wild, and he's in love with everyone. My heart is literally split between two women. And oh my god, his parents, and they seem to have concerns about both women. Do you see yourselves as being completely compatible? I'm a little bit concerned, because it's important you never to change him and him never to change you. Everything is falling apart! Everything in me wants to hold back and just tap out. I feel like I'm hanging on by a thread. And then Peter's gonna get this crazy news that we've been teased to all season, and he will be telling someone that he is so very sorry. So sorry. And of course, we end on Barb! Don't let her go. Bring her home. Bring her home to us. That's what love stories are made out of. What an episode of The Bachelor. Again, I was at the Women Tell All special. I interviewed many of the contestants and Peter himself, and you can see those interviews at etonline.com. Very importantly, I asked Peter, Peter, why do you not want easy, but want crazy? Mm-hmm. I am also available to you on the Instagrams, the Twitters, and the app Cameo if you'd like a personal message from me. I cannot wait for this finale, you guys. I think it's gonna be truly unbelievable, and we are gonna watch it together. Thank you for being a part of this season. I love you all so, so much. Coming in hot, everybody, with a vlog and some coffee to talk our new leading lady, Claire Crawley. I have been up since very early uh, to learn who our new The Bachelorette would be and how do I feel so excited. So Rob Mills and Chris Harrison, Rob is an exec at ABC, had both told me in interviews that they didn't want to address fan frustration with the cast members being a little too young as of late. More importantly, perhaps a little bit too immature. Well, Claire is 38 years old. The pendulum really swung the other way. Our oldest bachelorette ever. I think it's new and exciting. Claire has in the past served us strong woman vibes on Juan Pablo's season, emotional vibes, uh, funny vibes. You know, she infamously uh, spoke to a raccoon on Bachelor in Paradise. And that creates drama. I don't want it. I think it's gonna be great television and that's always what I'm looking for the most. Yes, there are other women who were candidates and who are wonderful people, but this is new and exciting and different and maybe we're gonna get some beautiful salt and pepper men on her season. And also I'm excited to see a leading lady date, maybe some younger guys. Cause again, to me, it's about maturity and experience, not necessarily age. Forgot to talk about the finale. So we have a two night live finale, Monday, March 9th and Tuesday, March 10th. And because the show is going live, we are too. Roses and Rose will be live right here on this YouTube channel, right after the airing of The Bachelor finales, Monday night and Tuesday night. So 7 p.m. Pacific, Monday and Tuesday. Come here. I'm going to be live reacting to what we just saw. I'm going to be taking your questions and comments live here. And we're going to be drinking wine live, of course. Very fun. So don't miss it. See you next week. Bye.
And for those of you who have been with us, you know that our motto for 2020 has been chic <laughs> only. And Chrisanne and JC have taken that to heart. JC in a suit with no tie, Chrisanne in a high-waisted pant. Can Peter make a decision? I'm not sure, maybe he can't.